Hey guys, we've got a Holly 94 carburetor off of a flathead Ford V8 that looks like this. We need to make it look like this, only better. Follow along. I got to admit, I'm falling into a trap. This is a trap that, uh, you know, Mortsky does a very good job of avoiding. Uh, guys like uh, Diesel Creek, guys like uh, Vice Grip Garage, Derek Beery, he uh, does a good job of avoiding this. However, what we've got here is the carburetor base. And I took a wire wheel to it and started cleaning it up. And you know what? It just turned out so nice that I can't resist. I got to put some paint on it. Likewise, you look at the... Uh, the top cover for this carburetor I don't know how well that shows up but there's still uh, gold anodizing on that aluminum now this carburetor is in really good shape once we uh, get the seized throttle out of it and I think I want to go the uh, the extra step and just kind of try and clean it up really well so let's get uh, going on some cleanup we got a whole bunch to do here and some reassembly this piece is basically clean i'm going to paint it what can i say uh it is not rusty at all right now but i know for sure that if we leave it in the raw cast iron before very long it's going to end up coated in rust and it's going to look like crap and well looks aren't necessarily the most important part of this whole deal you know possibly this carburetor is just going to end up being wall art or shelf bookshelf art and we may as well make it look halfway decent trim job doesn't have to be absolutely perfect as long as the, uh, the little overhangs aren't folded down against anything I'll do a little bit of a high speed time lapse on this. You guys don't need to listen to me blather on while I do this and uh, we'll get this all masked up ready for some paint. Basically masked up. I think that'll do. We've got some uh, gray high build primer, scratch and fill primer. Just a generic kind of primer. I don't know whether this is cans any good or not. Feels pretty full, but it's also well aged. Let me uh, get it shaken up and also the uh, flat black that we're going to put on there. And I'll bring you back when I'm ready to squirt some some uh, color. Oh, we'll give this stuff a try. I don't know, it seems pretty thick, but it'll work. Okay, that seems to be fairly decent. We'll let that flash off for a, uh, a few minutes and then we'll hit it with some color. We have this flat black that we'll try. I'll bring you back when we're ready to do that. It's been about 10 minutes. Let's uh, splash a little color on this thing and see how it turns out. I 
that has the uh, the top portion or the bottom of the float bowl done let's uh, put a little more on here Well, I was going to do two coats, but that's basically one coat on there, and uh, it looks pretty good. We'll go back to the bench and um, work on some other cleanup while we let this tack up a bit, and we'll come back and maybe dust on a little bit more, just in case there's a couple of thin spots. I wasn't uh, planning on taking this spring arm off of here, but I think for cleaning purposes, it's probably not a bad idea. If it'll come. Oh yeah. Now this is spring loaded. This is your uh, fast idle. Well, this part of it activates when the choke is on and therefore your idle screw kicks it into high idle when uh, when the choke is activated. So I think we'll do a little bit of a time lapse. I got a couple of toothbrushes here, some carb cleaner, some brake cleaner, and we'll uh, see if we can shine this up a little bit more. It's not bad now, but uh, just a little bit more elbow grease. I think it'll be better. I got the uh, the other two parts of the body fairly cleaned up. I don't want to go too aggressively with the wire wheel or wire brush at the uh, where there's gold anodizing on here, the factory anodizing. You know, I'll try and keep as much of that as I can. This uh, end of the float bowl was a bit cooked, whereas this side still has the gold to it. So that's why I use the wire brush here to try and get the cookedness off of here. Kind of, sort of like that. A uh, bunch more cleaning up to do on the internal parts here. And uh, we'll get those ready to go back into the bodies now that we've got the bodies pretty much ready to go. We'll uh, do a bit more of a time lapse on that. Get these uh, throttle and ch choke shafts all shined up. Choke plate and the throttle plates cleaned up. We'll make some good progress here. Let me uh, go back to a time lapse. You guys can listen to some more tunes and we'll uh, get this cleaned up.
Well guys, I think we've uh, made some good progress here. A lot of stuff that's been cleaned up. Still missing a few bits and pieces. I pulled the uh, choke detent and choke fork off of the uh, other carburetor. Unfortunately, the accelerator pump dog bone broke. But that's all right, I got another one on order. So we'll, uh, we'll be able to install that. Also these uh, float well plugs, I got new ones of those on order. This one here is a little bit on the chewed up side. I don't really want to leave that in there permanently. Otherwise, things cleaned up pretty well. You'll see that I used a wire brush or uh, strand to go in and uh, clean out a bunch of the passages. Normally you would say, no, don't do that. Uh, it's not good practice. It tends to open things up. But given the age of the carburetor, I think it was uh, kind of a necessary evil. Blown through all the passages with the uh, carb cleaner and everything seems to be flowing freely so I think we're to the point where we can start to put this together but that's going to be for another video. If you got this far can you give me one of those sum up things? Can you give me a, a like? And uh, if you haven't already done so why don't you hit that subscribe button it doesn't cost a thing and uh, helps build the channel. YouTube shares my content out to more people when I have more subscribers. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video and we'll catch you guys in the next mess.